Hello, Gary Hernandez here, and welcome to King Self Defense with Master Gary Hernandez. This is just a six month review of having and working with the new Bob Versus. Well, I've had it for going on six months now, so it is not new anymore. Now, it's in about a week, it's going to be six months since I bought this bag. So, well, I actually bought it, but I started using it a couple days after I bought it. When I put it together. So it's about six months since I've owned it. I'm going to tell you how this bag's held up, what I've done with it, what I learned about it, and is it worth it. Now, real quick capping on this. This is the original Bob from Century. And the Bob stands for Body Opponent Bag. If you didn't know that, I bought this one 26 years ago. A little over 26 years ago. Bought it in June. I remember the day. So I've had it for 26 years and it cost almost $300 back then. Um, and basically what's changed on this since then is they've actually had an extender with the newer bobs where it has pants to give you a little more, uh, more bag to strike. Now I had to change the base only one time because one of them had a small hole in it. So um, I had to get rid of that one and get a new base, but that fits basically any Century bag. Any base will fit with this one, pretty much. Now, after 26 years of abuse of being hit with students and weapons and stuff, it has torn up a bit to where it's not supposed to just turn like this, but it does, even though it can raise and go down. The tape area is because the, the bolts and washers in the back are torn up to where you can't even get to them too good because they're just deep into this rubber and it does leak out some white powder stuff that's in there so it's basically getting torn up pretty bad but for 26 years i've had my school for 20. so for six years it sat at my apartment then my house even had it at one of my companies i worked at in the back area working on it and then when i opened the school 20 years ago here it is so it's been hit a lot so it's taken the abuse and i've can say I definitely got my money out of it and I still have and still use it and about 16 17 years ago I bought this one they call this one Billy Bully it's what they called it back then now it was green for several years and over the time don't really know why they changed it to a flesh tone color versus the green um, this one's supposed to weigh 236 pounds give or take water weight or stand weight in the bottom this one's um, I think 146 or something like that water sand weight in the bottom i put water versus sand because if i have to empty the empty and move it somewhere water can be empty in the parking lot versus all that sand and sand's a little harder to get in than the water is they both have lasted pretty good i've had kids love this one they've hit it all the time they've been knocked over they've been hit they've been hit with both with training weapons and they've held out Moving on to this guy, one of the newest additions, the Century Bob Versus. Now, this one, this one cost me under 200, and this one cost me almost 300. This one sells for 500, 499.99, then you got your shipping, so you got over 500. Being a school owner, I got a discount of over 100 dollars on it, so it cost me. Three hundred and I think eighty some dollars then shipping, so we're right back to about to four hundred bucks easily. So basically, got it for just about four and maybe a hair over versus the five and a hair over. And when you get it, you got to put it together. It's in two boxes. Now they do sell the arms and the vest that you can put on any pretty much any bob for I think one hundred and sixty dollars. You have to look at that yourself. Now my overall review of this six months being used when i first got it my first week or two i treated it like a long lost brother and i was really worried about it getting hit after a month i treated it like a stepbrother i beat the crap out of it so <laughs> but i got lucky a lot of people that had had this before me were very nice when i did my showing on this and to send me photos and a few videos of what they did wrong and how theirs got damaged. And overall, I took their advice to heart and I figured how I wanted to use it to train with and to teach with. 
Now, like I said, this one's 230 something pounds. I think it has 146 something pounds. This one only maxed out weight sandbag wise, 75 pounds. But with the whole thing, it's probably, because it's probably about maybe 15 pounds, 20 pounds. So almost 200 pounds. Um, I'm sorry, almost 100 pounds, I'll say. Now, if you look here, it takes sandbags in these right here. These little bag areas. You, you un-Velcro them. You have three bags that comes with it. You put your sand in them. Each bag max weight of the sand is 25 pounds. So your max sand weight is 75. Now, where I saw and I learned about damages that were done to them, most of the damages on all the bags that people were sending me were basically there in the lay area. Well, I could tell what happened. I made sure I didn't know this. Number one, being that <clears throat> there was weight in there, people kind of stepping here when they kicked it. Somebody, some people were probably stepping here, and it ripped the vinyl. It started to tear the threading. Number two, <clears throat> this is designed for roundhouses and cutting kicks to the leg, not side kicks, not power side kicks. You can gently side kick it. But if you do a power side kick or a cutting down side kick, you're going to fold it and tear it. Number one, you're going to rip this threading after one or two good hits, and you're going to buckle it and tear the padding inside. That's what I saw with most of these that they sent me the photos. Most damaged it in the lake. Now, what I did was to prolong this thing because it's a lot of money when you're dropping 400 if you don't have a school you're dropping five and change is number one <clears throat> I didn't put the sand in it why don't need it because now I can when my students adults or kids are hitting it they're knocking it back and I'm catching it or if I want them to knock it over they knock it over number two they can grab it and throw it so I didn't put the weight in there to take a chance of somebody falling on it stepping on it it falls over and tearing it up and number two I went ahead and when I'm using it for canes or any other screaming stick or anything, and I'm hitting it, I'm hitting it hard. But I make sure what am I hitting it with? With some of my canes that have a real sharp horn, I'm making sure I'm not tearing up with the sharp horn. If I've got something real sharp, I make sure I'm not tearing into it. If I've got one of these right here, and I got a derby style, and it has a sharp, I call that the chisel and the hammer. And you can hit it hard hammer and with the chisel just don't tear directly into it this is a three pound cane it holds up pretty good when i'm using a palm rest one same thing make sure that palm rest on my shadow hawk's not tearing into it so i'm making sure i'm not using nothing sharp or digging into it to tear it up so that's one way to keep it safe second way is make sure nobody steps on those areas so when it goes over they tear up the threading. Third is I'm letting it free flow. I'm not putting a lot of weight in it to where it may tear up. And also I'm making sure that they're not wearing, nobody has any kind of jewelry whatsoever, even though we're not supposed to have any when we're training and nothing's cutting into it. So that's the, keeping it lasting. Now you can buy the vest for I think 150 or 60. That'll fit most bobs they say. Now, the arms is another area I did see videos where they were tearing, the stitching, stuff like that. Again, I think people stood here trying to toss it, whatever. So I'm still striking the collarbone hard, the elbows hard, the wrist hard. So I'm still hitting it. I'm still hitting it hard with bayonet strikes. Again, it is lasting so far it's holding up to everything because I'm still training with it smart and using it to where I make sure I don't tear it up that much. And when the students are hitting it and stuff, I'm there. I'm not leaving it unsupervised with a bunch of kids climbing on, tearing up on it and, you know, going crazy on it. So that's how it's been hanging in there and lasting. Now, here's my thoughts on it. As a training tool, as a bag to train on, between 1 and 10, 10 the highest, I give it a 6. It's pretty good. It is light. It's designed to be knocked over and thrown. I know that. So it's light. 
I give it a six. If I want to hit something hard, put a lot of power in, I'll use an XXL. If I want to do a lot of grappling, I'll get a pound and ground dummy that's designed for that. So I give it a six. As a training aid, I'm going to give it a high eight, almost a nine. The reason I, a training aid is because <clears throat> that's what I use it for a lot. <clears throat> Kids, it's a training aid, but a training tool as well. Yes. <clears throat> when I pandemic, I didn't, you know, I couldn't use Bob all the time or my other Bob, the living Bob or Billy or Master Crooner or somebody. So I, when they weren't here, I used this as a explaining the techniques because what was good about it and what's still good about it is the fact that you have the features of a person. So now you can talk about going the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the throat, the ears. You can talk about striking the collarbones, the elbows, the wrist area, the knees, the solar plex, even hitting the groin. So as a training tool, as a teaching aid, I give it a high eight to nine. It's great. And then it turns into a training tool while I'm showing the people where to strike, whether it's open hand, feet, elbows, or knees, or going into any kind of a cane or other weapon, then they can, they can see where to strike. So that's one of the great benefits of having it, is more of a teaching aid over a training bag for hard workout. Because then again, I'll spend a lot less money on an XXL and I've had that one for over 15, no, not maybe about 12 years. And it's lasted good. So that's my thoughts on it. Would I spend this kind of money again? No. Um, if they lower the price on it, you know, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, I'll buy a bunch of them then. But until they do that, I'm not going to do that. I bought it again primarily for me to do my videos but also for the adults when they're hitting it, they have a target base versus me just holding the shield or using that bottom. Now they got a lower area to strike. So that's where it comes in handy a lot. So that's my, you know, whole input on it. I've had it for six months now. It's holding out. I'm hoping to have it as long as I can. It's like anything else. Treat it to the best of your abilities. Treat it, you know, the best you can with care. And um, it should last you as long as it's going to hold out for. Do I give it 26 years? No. Do I give it 16 to 17 years? No. And I'll probably start tearing up within five years. Something will happen, I'm sure. But again, it works for what I need it for. So I can't tell you yes to buy one, no to buy one. I can just tell you what I've been able to do with it. I've been able to hit it full power with things because I know... And I've learned from number one, thank you again, everybody that showed me their pictures and videos and told me what they did wrong um, and the do's and don'ts. I've learned from that. And then also, you know, common sense what not to do with it as well. Once I've learned that, okay, then I know I can't kick it like that. So I can't let anybody else kick it like that. I've got to be respectful with it to make it last. So it's going to work for me for what I need. For you guys, again, if you're going to make it a training aid or a you want to you want to work out with it with a cane, it is it's great as long as you're not using something sharp, like I said earlier, and um, as long as you can afford it, it's it's pretty good to have. So overall, I would buy one again if I didn't own one, but I wouldn't buy two and have two in the building until they lower the prices. So hopefully that does help. Um, you know, the best thing to do is I say before you buy one, if you get an opportunity and you see somebody that has one, check it out. That's what I did. I got lucky. I was, um, talking to a gentleman, um, and he had the, uh, actually the owner came after Steve Milton. I was at his house and he has one and I was lucky enough to kind of work out on it and get an idea of it. So that really kind of told me a lot as well. So overall, it's not too bad. Like I said, as a kick bag, I give it a six. As a training aid, I give it a high eight to nine. So hopefully that helps. Gary, and thank you very much. And I will see you guys very soon. And bye.